Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing and a review of Paranormal Puck 2B from Digital Dowsing. And it's right here. Yes, it is. And I'm going to take it out of the box. You already cut that. I've already cut this, so save a little bit of time. And this Paranormal Puck 2, you need um, an app which works with your Android phone or your iPhone. So it comes in an optional, comes in a with a hard case or without the hard case. I'd suggest the hard case because it's just cool. And also you can protect your... your uh, you, you, yeah, you can protect it too, but... Otherwise you'd it's, be it's, it's just cool. getting the whole thing and just putting it wherever you want to put it in your bag. You don't want that. Right. Point. So you want to do the honors and... Uh, turn it over. Oh, wow. Is it um, water resistant? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, there you go. It comes with a USB with an extension and a little card that tells you, uh, it doesn't come with a user guide. So it comes with this card and of course the puck. Why is there no user guide in this thing? The user guide is found on the digital dowsing website. Is it a PDF? No, not that I could see. It's uh, part of their website. It says it there. Digitaldowsing.com PP2. Well, first we'll show these devices here. Oh yeah. Here's the puck. And here's the cord. We don't need to use the cord. The cord is only for recharging the puck. And as you can see, it has a micro USB on one end and right in the center, right here, is a micro USB port for charging it. So we don't need that. We downloaded the app on our iPad. It works both Android and I oh, iOS. iOS. So that means your Android device or your phone iPad. There were reviews when, when I downloaded um, the app from the Apple App Store and there were reviews that were saying that it doesn't work. Well, it actually does work. It doesn't work as a, a standalone app. You need the puck. Some people think you download the app and it works as it's a standalone app, but it doesn't. You this, These two need to work together. Although this can work by itself. The puck has some modes where it will work autonomously the app does not you might see some negative uh, replies or comments that it doesn't work well because you need the puck to make the app work so the first thing we need to do is we need to turn on the puck because the puck transmits bluetooth and the app connects via bluetooth so if the puck is not on the app will not see it and the app will not communicate and you'll be just confused why it's not working so the first thing we'll do is turn on the power switch on the puck and it is now on. It's flashing and it is initializing. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the app. Okay, so there is our app and this device actually has a button to make it a little bit bigger. Nope, that's it. Okay, it doesn't fill the full screen, but you can see it's, it does a fine job. So what modes do we have on this? You don't know a lot by looking at the icons on the screen. There's a picture of a person, looks like they're speaking. What is that, a gear? That's probably settings. There is a clock and a camera. And at the bottom we have the, th the thermometer, and then we have two, a number one and a number two. It looks like some sort of a chart icon and then a list. Though, would, would you call that a list icon? A chart? <laughs> no. So we can go through. Okay. Okay, so we're going to click the first one and see what it is. It's the person with the little waves coming off their head. Okay, this is the ITC app that we are very familiar with. This is where you ask a question and it responds. And at the bottom, we have a home button. Click the home button and we'll go back to the main screen. And then the gear icon is the second icon on the top. 
changes speech from male to female, child, slow, normal, fast, and test speech. It looks like there's some settings to change LEDs on here as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe the lights. One through five, and then a few other buttons that look like they're for adjusting some of the settings. So this is called the voice settings. So let's go back to the home, and we have, looks like a clock icon. Mm -hmm. More settings. There's alarms, minimums, and maximums. Maybe this is for setting the, the different values. Let's click. Looks like an let's, alarm. Let's see, this is the lines. There's a mountain, some dashed lines, and all. So I guess we're gonna have to try those and see what they do. Go back to home, and there's a camera. And it looks like the camera, it's for, it says for video capture, and I think that's to capture whatever's happening in the moment. Or if you're using your phone, you can download it on your phone too. Because sometimes when you have, you know when you're using an app, and you have to press the home button so you can go So you back can access and, yeah. your camera yeah. while you're using the app. Mm -hmm. That's a nice feature, but that way you don't have to turn off your, your app and then take a photo and then go back to your app. Okay, so what else do we got back on the home page? It's like a temperature. A thermometer icon. What this is showing is all the different environmental values that are happening right now. So is the puck itself picking up all the temperatures? It shows here the temperature, light, energy, and the battery. So by itself, it's running mm -hmm. and analyzing the environment in this area? Yes, wherever where the puck is, that's what's being taken in, the information. Looks like it says it's 70 degrees here. Nice. No wonder I'm not that cold. <laughs> So it has temperature and humidity and BPSI, which is barometric pressure. And why would you need that? Well, temperature is what the current temperature is around. And humidity is how much moisture is in the air. And the barometric pressure is basically the air pressure. These all relate to weather. So if the temperature suddenly drops, hey, feel this cold spot. Maybe something's trying to manifest, taking the energy from the room. A similar thing with humidity. If a temperature drops, colder air holds less moisture than warm air. So you might see a temperature drop or you might see a humidity go, go up if a temperature drops. And the same thing with barometric pressure. They're all related. We've all heard when a spirit tries to manifest, it takes the energy from the room or from your batteries or from your camera. So it might be a similar thing here if it's taking energy from the environment around it. It could be affecting temperature, humidity, or and barometric pressure. And it has light, energy, and battery. In the light, I think it has a light sensor. How bright it is in the environment, in the current. Which means room. it might be affected by, yep. by... Yeah, see I put my hand over it and the light value drops down considerably. So. It's not just, it, it will capture shadows or in changes in light. So shadow figure capture, maybe. Maybe if something tries to go over it and tries to touch it. What is the XYZ uh, that's axis? Some kind of a motion sensor. So if I move it a little bit, I wanna see if these numbers change a little bit. So if something touches it, is it from changes in the side? Looks like it is changing too. I don't know if it's a sensor or something getting close to it. You can also reset it. If you're using it for an investigation for a certain day, you don't want to get that data from a week ago or a month ago, so you can reset it. Back to the home page. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got two chart icons. This one, number one, is showing temperature humidity chart, barometric pressure, and static energy levels. It's currently showing zero data. So I'm assuming that it needs to cycle through this over a certain amount of time before anything will show up in this chart. Back to home page. Home page. Home page. Uh, looks like uh, your app just died. I think it locked up. Well. Yep, it locked up. Okay, so... I guess it does that, so you just gotta just kill the app. Kill the app, open it again. 
Oh, okay. Killing the app. Looks like it turned it that to, back on. It needed on to too. reconnect to the Bluetooth back to the device again. Let's go to number two. Magnetic levels, movement, and light level. I think these are charts showing some of the information that was on the other screen. There's even a G-force in there. Which I think would be movement mm -hmm. and light level Speed. Would, would be probably blocking it. And it does change. Back to the home page. Okay. okay, and the last icon is this one with the four lines. This is looks like a data log. Click a clipboard, a timer, trash, an email, oh. and a trash probably is to clear the data log. Well, the email probably so you can send it. Share send a it. copy of the data log to yourself. Well, sometimes it's hard to get that information for yourself to review. I would have wondered how do you get that log and all that information get it out of this yeah. app to your computer or to uh, some other sort of device to analyze it or save it into maybe uh, even into a spreadsheet what are those the clipboard let's see clipboard maybe that's what it is in the time the maybe clock. this is the clipboard no. as an alarm a word log oh it crashed email crashed it I don't have an email app, that's why it's probably thinking. Sorry. But it should have still done something. Okay, so let's go back to that same one. The trash, trash is, is going to say, what's it going to say? Delete all log files. Oh, we don't have to. Right we'll now. say no for now. Okay, so back to home. Now that's it. So I think that there's also that the paranormal puck will work on its own. Without the app, I believe it has different modes. Uh, that's what I was reading on the website, that there are six different modes. And so if you're running this on its own, does um, it log all the information there? And then when you turn on the app, it downloads all the information from this to that. Is that how that works? I don't know. Well, you can get your phone. That's a good idea. Let me get my phone out. And we're going to look at the digital dowsing website Okay, so according to the website, there are six standalone modes on the paranormal puck that when it's not connected to your phone or your tablet. What was the battery? So let's go back and find that. The temperature. There you go. Battery says 370. 37%? Mm-hmm. Is that what it means? I don't know what that means. I believe maybe it might be that. I'm just guessing. So everybody's always interested in the ITC part of it, where you ask questions and you get answers. So let's give that one a try and see what kind of answers we get. Right now, right here? Right here, right now. We're going to test it. <laughs> okay, okay, so we're going to ask the question. What's Now it says that you can also speak the question or you, you can, can type the question. I don't know how to speak the question. What's that? And, oh, the and the, there's a little slider bar at the top which I think is how fast it responds mm -hmm. to you. So let's just put in a question. Oh, I see. When you bring it up, it brings up the keyboard. So I, there's a little microphone there on the keyboard. And I think if you press that one, you can speak and it will do a speech to text mm -hmm. and fill in the box. Hi, hello. We'll say hello. And return. And it says world. Keep in mind that not every sort of question gets an answer that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, it probably wasn't a response to your question. I'm just going to try to relate this to our Ovulus 5. Sometimes we ask questions and it doesn't run. I mean, you can wait for a bit and then all of a sudden it starts speaking. We don't know exactly how a spirit would try to know how to use it. Or just... Um, Maybe they're trying to figure out how to manipulate the puck because there's so many sensors in this puck and it's using all the different sensors temperature humidity movement like everything to try to communicate through the itc app the itc app is like the core of what the puck is and then all the sensors are built around it so let's try something let's try another question how about what's your name yeah pretty typical question what is your name return France now that's the name of a country 
might be the name of a person. Maybe it's short for something else. Frenchy. Francis. Francis. Oh, yeah. Prince. Frank. Where are you? Are you? Your turn. Son. Hmm. Are you a... Man. Speak. Mm. How many people are there? Yep. How many people are in this room? Are in this room? No response. Okay. Well, that's interesting because that's a very, very specific question. Yeah. So that, it does actually say no response. Yeah, it says no response. Oh, oh just crashed. Uh, well. The camera just stopped. We have an overhead camera that's recording this and it just stopped. I'm not sure why. It's never done that before. Let's ask why. Let's say, did you stop the camera? It says glove. I don't think so. How about my turn? Your turn. Do you... know our names. He dives. As soon as you hit the user question, it clears the whole thing. So we just, that's a nice mm -hmm. feature. You don't have to backspace and delete the whole thing. It's nice. How about one more? Where are you? Question mark. Blog. A blog writer? You're on our blog? You're a blog writer? I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, here's a good one. What year is it? Draw. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. No, you can. Uh... I'm just trying to see what's there. Oh, I, I guess the only thing I can it's, say about the app is it's, it's kind of it just has its own so works because it was just you, I just saw a spinning wheel a little bit. It looks like it might crash again. And then it without a question, it said phone. When did that do that? Just now. I don't know what to say to that. You didn't even ask a question. Did not ask a question. Whose phone? Let's ask one more question. How about is this a phone year? Earlier you asked what year is We're it? asking that, so maybe it so takes sure. a while for something to try to figure Can't out you? how to communicate with you. So oh, cool. it might just take a, a lot of questions and a lot of time Sometimes we have, we've asked questions on our Oculus and then it takes a few words later on mm -hmm. and it catches up and then you kind of remember, oh yes, I remember asking that question a few minutes ago. Plus we're in, we're not in a haunted location. I guess you just have to be aware that um, the app does have, like I said, some, some quirks to it. And also my iPad was updated. Updates can affect the app. Sometimes some apps don't work anymore when or maybe they don't update anymore. Hopefully they keep updating this because they're, they are still selling this. Yes, this is the latest version. And they're so far over the holidays it was sold out. It says that they have some on their website. Coming soon. So if you want to get this, you can pre-order, I guess. Hopefully we get to go somewhere that is we can actually use this in a more controlled environment. A haunted environment. Yes. <laughs> oh, how about the camera? Let me see what it does. 
Yeah, go ahead. Oh, it takes a photo up in the scene. It's a forward facing. Oh, I guess you can change the orientation of the camera. That would be the, okay, so the camera button now looks. What is that gear wheel? Flash on, flash off. Oh, that's okay, a flash. And the other one is, the other icon is for forward and. Oh, got it. So if I pick it up. And it's going to change to mm -hmm. the other facing camera and there's the puck. So there's an alarm. So this, what we're looking at here is the offline program. Now I believe oh. that that is what is used to control what the puck does. So you turn that on before when, you turn it off. So I, I guess you have to set these and okay. then it sets the puck. And then if the app is not running but the puck is on, it will run those programs. Well, it makes sense. What if your phone dies? Yeah. Or your iPad dies? And you still want to use the puck mm -hmm. to check for you know, temperature and barometric and noise and... So that's a good feature. Or all. You can turn all of them on and then when you have the device turned off, your, your mobile device, the puck will just cycle through all of those different modes, which I believe all the lights are able to be set so that you know what light is triggered by what sensor. That's pretty handy because we've had times where our phone's about to die. You know how we have iPhones <laughs> and sometimes you're taking photos or doing something or recording next thing you know like oh no I only have 20% of it. I know um, they use the paranormal puck a lot on not a lot actually on TV on the shows. You see them mostly using the ITC word diction question and answer portion that we just used but it's also nice to know that it has all of these other sensors built into it nice. which you don't usually see it's always nice to have another device to measure those and so that way you can actually compare is that really a cold spot am i just the only one cold and you're not so that way you actually have proof through using the paranormal puck and the log this would probably be very useful near trigger objects also. Uh, for example, a doll or a toy or some sort of historic object that might bring somebody over, a spirit over to it, and then it may affect the sensors. Now, can you leave this in one section of the room? Let's say the REM pod. Yes, you can. If it's in its own mode, then it will run all of its uh, offline sensors. It'll record the data to the puck and then transfer it back to the app. And you can analyze it and by emailing it to yourself. Yes. <laughs> Puck itself, because it's Bluetooth, has a range a distance of how far it will be functioning away from the actual device. The optimal distance would be right around 40 or 50 feet. And that's probably if you're in another room or if you have a nice clear line of sight, it might even be up to maybe even up to 100 feet. It probably just depends on the environmental factors, but it's meant to be used up close. So it's not meant to put it at the one end of a giant location and then expect to be receiving content from your phone or your tablet when you're three or four rooms away. It could work if you put it and let it run by itself as a standalone puck and put a camera next to it, then you can just... You could do that. So if there were any changes in um, light, there was a option there you know, so you can see in your camera if it doesn't stay on i mean the lights i guess you that's when you i think they're only on when the sensors are running and when it's connected to the tablet the device it's not activating all the sensors for example if you have the temperature on any changes in temperature may trigger lights or you may have to manually go in and turn on those lights <laughs> so is that it is that everything? i think that covers it yeah okay well, hopefully we did get to show you what the Paranormal Puck 2 does. And um, if you'd like to get it, it's on the digital dowsing website. Sometimes it's back order. Sometimes it'll take you a month or two to get it. So if you are interested in getting it, go there as soon as possible. Put in your order. Take it out in the field. Go talk to some spirits. And also, if you'd like to comment, and let us know if you did get it and you used it. And let us know how it worked for you. We'd love to hear any anyone's input, feedback, what kind of evidence or interaction you've had with it too. Hopefully we get to use it pretty soon. Try it out in the field for real, mm -hmm. not just in the house. <laughs> I'll let you know what happens.
I'll show you what results we get. Who nice. is that? That's my microphone. Why is it going? Look at your meter. What was that? Oh, I'm all goosebumpy. <laughs> now I am too. There was a noise out there. What was that? I don't know. Somebody was Somebody snapping. was just talking to. Oh my gosh, my my. I'm all goosebumpy right now. I am, I'm not I am too. That was your microphone. That wasn't mine. I'm all goosebumpy. I'm just sitting here. Where's the noise actually? We were trying. Here you go. Who is here? We were trying to end this video, but something happened. Our microphones went off. We started and getting some. A, I, before that, we were trying to end the video, and there was a clunk out there in, our, in the hallway. I heard and the then, clunk. We were laughing and then your microphone started going My crazy. mic was just, yeah, it was getting all sorts of feedback. We could hear it. And then we started it. getting all goosebumpy. So now we're going to type in, who is here? Gail. Gail. Hello, Gail. <laughs> and how about ask, is, was that you who did the microphone? I'll say, did you make that? noise warm the receiver died oh maybe the battery died in the receiver i just replaced that well well you're picking me i'm picking up so we're just gonna end talking this to the mic over here <laughs> we're just gonna end this something just mic went dead or something Maybe it was Gail. It was. It was Gail. Maybe Gail did it. How I don't an, know. What an interesting ending this is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess it does work. Thanks for watching the video. And uh, until next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Well, that was weird. I wonder what happened. So this one's off though.